So each Neto device, doesn't matter if it's a switch, a router, a firewall, a uh, you know an IPS even, but that's going to be less common. Let's speak in general about it, say router switches and firewalls, which are the most commonly seen um, network devices pretty much in all networks. Otherwise, we have, of course, other network devices, but um, uh, let's say um, number from the numbering point of view, they are less frequent to be seen in the network as opposed to routers, uh, switches, and firewalls. So each of those three main network device network devices have to begin on what is called the control plane. So their operation is being done through a, a couple of planes, like three in a three in a, a number. One of them being the control plane. Where the control plane identifies all traffic is going to be, I said in their IP traffic, but it can be non-IP traffic, as I said in the example. So it can be any, it's going to be any traffic IP or non-IP initiated by the router or destined to the router. So it's not going to be traffic transiting the router. And this, the control plane traffic is being used by the router to learn information required for packet forwarding, which is going to be the data plane uh, the, from the operationing uh, operation point of view. So, for example, like uh, protocols like ARP, like OSPF, BGP, LDP, PIM, and because packets are always destined to the router or initiated by the router, it means that all of those packets are going to be process switched, which means by the CPU of that specific uh, device. So, as I was saying, the, the, the main scope of the, the control plane it is basically is going to run some protocols like those examples like ARP and routing protocols and those protocols are going to facilitate the, 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 the data plane uh, forwarding capability. So if the router doesn't learn uh, through routing protocols about destinations, if the router doesn't learn through ARP what is the IP to MAC binding, then the router cannot route packets back and forth. Next is going to be the management plane which is just a subset of the control plane because likewise in here we have IP traffic in general in most cases it's IP traffic in here which is likewise as in the control plane case either initiated by the router or destined to the router please take note that I have conf I said in here router generically speaking because as I was saying this applies to pretty much all network devices if it's a router, a switch, a firewall or pretty much even other types of devices, all of them have this, ki this kind of planes um, in order to operate and perform their their day-to-day -day job in the network. So the management plane is used as the name states, it, it is used for remote inbound router or device management, examples being SNMP, Telnet, SSH, NTP, TechX Plus, Radius, and so on. And likewise, because these packets, in order to manage the router, these packets are the destined to the router or initiated by the router, it means that packets are likewise always process switched by an network device. So all of the SNMP packets, Telnet packets, NTP, TACX plus, Radius, all of them are going to hit in the CPU and be processed by the CPU because the router, the device has to intercept the packet, accept it, and open up the payload to see okay what is this packet for okay it's for me it's an OSPF packet let me let me open it up and see what's in that OSPF packet and use it to populate my routing table for example that was for the control plane packet or for the data plane pack for the management plane packet if it's for example TACAX plus it means I'm gonna receive a TACAX plus packet destined to me as a router I'm gonna accept it open it up and see what's in there and make use of it to authenticate users or you know whatever I'm using TACAX for and clearly we have the last plane which is a data plane where it's going to be in the data plane we have in general IP traffic uh, because nowadays we speak about IP everywhere we, it's very rare cases that we have non-IP traffic being routed like for example IPX or Apple Talk or whatever else so other layer 3 let's say protocols so data plane has to do with the forwarding of layer 2 protocols, which nowadays we speak about IP traffic. So because this has to do with the forwarding of, of, the, of the packets back and forth, it means that the, the, the traffic which belongs to the data plane is not going is to transit the router, is not going to be destined or initiated by the router. So this, this, this data plane identifies it's going to in the end be the packet forwarding, 
between the router interfaces so that's the final goal of the router to be able to route packets back and forth or the final scope of a switch to be able to switch packets back and forth or the final scope of a firewall to be able to as long as the packet is being it's allowed by security policies likewise the firewall has to be able to switch the packets back and forth if it's deployed in layer 2 or route the packets back and forth if it's deployed in layer 3 and of course data plane cannot work without control plane being functional but of course can work without management plane being functional so as i was saying before if if a router or a switch or uh, let's say a router or a file needs to find uh, information how to reach ip destination is ip destinations is going to be doing that through routing protocols once the running protocols have done their jobs then the next hop the ip to mac binding is done by the r protocol so those protocols are going to be uh, packets which belong to the control plane. So that's why if the router cannot learn about destinations to routing protocols and cannot resolve next hops, then data plane can never work. So it makes sense that without the control plane, data plane cannot work. But without the management plane, data plane can work. Because the management plane of the router is only used to be able to remotely manage the router, monitor it, and also grab any statistics from the router to be used for uh, other purposes, like for example, for for instance, an for instance analysis or incident management in a case of an attack. And packets e that belong to the data plane, which are transit packets, are in general self switched, which means those packets will be either hardware accelerated or software accelerated or assisted, depending on the platform. You, we're speaking about so some platforms they do safe in hardware some of them they do safe in, in software so it all depends on, on, on the platform you're speaking about where most of the high-end platforms the modular platforms are going to be doing the data plane so packet forwarding is going to be done at level self level in hardware that's why they have better performances like you see a router which can you can route back and forth terabits per second while if this is being done in software, which is the case for smaller routers like it's the, the ISR G2 series, then that's why on those routers you see smaller performance in the range of hundreds of megabits per second or close to maybe one gigabit per second on the bigger devices. Because this routers do uh, set in software, it's CPU assisted somehow, they don't have dedicated ASICs to do self switching or safe packet forwarding. But even in the case, so ideally the data plane packets will be in general uh, self switched for performance. That's why that's how we achieve huge, uh, huge performances on, on the routers that do everything in hardware that they can achieve terabits per second uh, forwarding throughput as opposed to other boxes that don't they don't have the hardware option. Either way, even if most packets in the data plane will be somehow self-switched, if it's hardware or software, it doesn't matter. If in, in the end, most of them will be self-switched, there are some use cases where the data plane packet is also going to be process switched. I give I give that just one example in there. When the packet, when the router needs to fragment the packet, then because the fragmentation of the packet has to be done by the CPU, because the CPU has to realize, okay, the packet that came in size 200, the egress interface MTU is a thousand, is uh, I don't know, 50, 500 or whatever. So the, the let's say that the ingress uh, packet size was 1500 and then egress interface MTU size is um, 1000, so 10 hundreds. So in that case, the router has to split the packet into two, but that has to be done by the CPU. So in that case, even if that packet is a packet transiting the router, it's not destined to the router, because the router has to take some action on the packet, except other than switching it back and forth or routing it, it has to fragment the packet that cannot be done in, in Ceph. It's going to be done at, at, the, in, in, at the process level, at the CPU level. So at that point, that specific packet will not be self switched it is going to be process switched so you have to in general identify whatever the network devices you're working on you have to know you have to be aware of those protocols because you're going to have specific tools to defend against attacks to any of those data of those planes because as you're going to speak next, you're going to have specific tools to defend against control plane attacks, against data plane attacks, against management plane attacks. 
and likewise you have to understand what is the architecture of that uh, of that specific network device because some devices uh, um, some devices uh, for example um, make a clear some devices make a clear difference between those three planes other devices from different vendors they somehow uh, put everything into like put the control plane and a management plane into the same plane for example so it can vary between uh, vendor and between uh, each vendor's equipments but in the end those three planes exist on all devices it's just a matter that if they are treated individually by that specific uh, device or somehow uh, two of them like in general the control plane and the management plane are treated uh, as a single let's say plane not as two different planes